Chapter 9, Learning Objective 2, Record and Disclose Known Current Liabilities A known current liability is a liability where the payee, amount, and timing of payment are known. Examples include accounts payable, unearned revenues, and payroll liabilities. Current liabilities that are not known, but must still be considered and reported, are estimated current liabilities. Let's start by discussing payroll liabilities, which are amounts owing to employees, as well as deductions by the employer from an employee's salary or wages which can include employee income taxes, Canada Pension Plan, CPP, or Quebec Pension Plan in Quebec, employment insurance, EI, union dues, health insurance, and other amounts. All of these items are withheld by the employer in trust and must be remitted by the employer to the appropriate agency. An employee's gross earnings, less the deductions withheld by the employer, equals the net pay. Here's an example of common payroll information for two employees, Jane and John. Jane works in the sales division and her gross salary before deductions is $1,560, whereas John works in the office or administration division and his gross salary is $975 before deductions. Deductions from each of their pay might include EI, income taxes, health insurance, CPP, and union dues. Total deductions for Jane are $533 and $312 for John. This results in net pay of $1,027 for Jane and $663 for John. Take note of the numbers in the total line here as they will be used to create the journal entry to record the payroll with debits to sales and office salaries expenses for $1,560 and $975, respectively, along with credits to various liability accounts, including EI payable, for total EI deductions of $42.34, employee income taxes payable for a total of $399, employee health insurance payable for $110, CPP payable for $113.66, employee union dues payable for $180, and salaries payable for the net pay for both employees of $1,690. Note, this entry was just to record the payroll expense along with the employee deductions but does not include any additional employer expenses related to the payroll, such as the employer portions of EI and CPP resulting in a journal entry that includes a debit to EI expense of $59.28, which is the employee EI deduction of $42.34 multiplied by 1.4 representing the amount the employer must contribute, and that equals 59.28. Then, we have a debit to the CPP expense of $113.66, which is the equivalent amount to the employee amount. In Canada, the employer contributes the same to the CPP program as the employee does. This results in credits for the same amounts to EI and CPP payable accounts. It's important to remember that for EI and CPP, both the employee and employer are responsible for making payments to the government. At present in Canada, and for many years, the employer portions of EI and CPP are 1.4 and 1.0 times the employee portions. EI, CPP, and federal-slash-provincial income tax amounts payable are based on rates applied to an employee's gross earnings, and the rates are subject to change each tax year. The next common known liability is sales taxes of which there are three in Canada. The Federal Goods and Services Tax, GST, Provincial Sales Tax, or PST, and the Harmonized Sales Tax, or HST for provinces that once had a separate PST but elected to harmonize with the federal GST at a higher rate to reduce the administrative burden in tracking two separate taxes. The Federal Goods and Services Tax, GST, is 5% of the selling price of taxable supplies, the goods or services on which GST applies. The tax is not applied to zero-rated supplies such as prescription drugs, groceries, and medical supplies, or exempt supplies, for services such as education, healthcare, and financial. Zero-rated supplies are technically taxed, but at a rate of 0%. Sellers of taxable supplies are registrants, or businesses registered with Canada Revenue Agency, that sell taxable supplies and collect GST on behalf of the Canada Revenue Agency the federal government body to which all taxes, including federal income tax, are remitted. Registrants also pay GST on the purchase of taxable supplies recording an input tax credit for the GST paid. 
Total Input Tax Credits, or GST Receivable, less GST Payable, is the amount to be remitted slash refunded. With Provincial Sales Tax, PST, the provincial sales tax paid by the final consumers of products rate is determined provincially and calculated as a percentage of the selling price. Quebec Sales Tax, QST, is Quebec's equivalent to PST but is charged on top of GST. Harmonized Sales Tax, HST, is a combination of GST and PST that is used in some Canadian jurisdictions. Here's a summary of the various sales taxes and rates across Canada. Now let's look at an example of how to account for sales taxes. Let's assume Perry Sales, out of Saskatchewan, purchased $2,400 of merchandise inventory on account from a supplier, Carmen Incorporated, also in Saskatchewan. Perry Sales then sold this merchandise inventory to a customer for cash of $3,600. Perry Sales will have three entries for these transactions, one for the purchase, one for the subsequent sale of merchandise, and one for the remittance of sales taxes. The purchase entry will include a debit to merchandise inventory of $2,400 for the actual cost excluding GST, along with a debit to a GST receivable account because the company can claim the GST charged as an input tax credit and get it back from the government. The balancing amount is a credit to accounts payable for $2,520, which would be the total invoice amount for the purchase. Then, Perry sells the goods for a value of $3,600, and we will credit sales for that amount. Since Saskatchewan has a 5% PST we will credit $180, 5% times $3,600, and credit a PST payable account. We will also credit GST payable for the same amount, since the GST rate of 5% happens to be the same as the 5% PST rate. The balancing debit is to cash for the total of $3,960. If this transaction were in Alberta, there would be no PST calculation. The last entry is to record the remittance of the taxes to the provincial and federal governments with debits to the PST and GST payable accounts for $180 each. Then, we also credit the GST receivable account for the $120 the company paid for the inventory because it is an input tax credit, or ITC, resulting in net GST payable of only $60, $180 charged less $120 paid. The net credit to cash, then, is $240. Another type of known liability is short-term notes payable and the accounting for these is virtually identical to a note receivable except that it is a current liability instead of an asset, and any interest revenue would instead be interest expense. Short-term notes receivable were discussed in Chapter 7 and you should consider reviewing that section. Let's look at a brief example of a short-term note payable based on the BDCC slash Bendix Incorporated example we covered in Chapter 7. Recall from that problem BDCC's customer, Bendix Incorporated, was unable to pay its $5,000 account within the normal 30-day period, so the receivable was converted to a 5%, 60-day note receivable, dated December 5, 2023. The journal entries for BDCC from Chapter 7 which recorded the note receivable are on the left. If we look at the first entry where the $5,000 a slash R was converted to a note receivable via a debit to the note receivable and credit to accounts receivable, for Bendix, we would record the conversion of the outstanding account payable to a note payable with a debit to accounts payable for $5,000 and a credit to the note payable for $5,000. The next entry for BDCC was to record the interest receivable of $17.81 calculated as the 5,000 principal times 5% times 26 days out of 365 days, with a debit to interest receivable and credit to interest revenue. On the right side, Bendix will record the same amount as interest expense and interest payable with a debit to the former and credit to the latter. The last entry was to record the maturity of the note which included a debit to cash for BDCC of $5,041.10, which included the full principal plus the 60 days interest. Bendix would record that as a credit to cash. BDCC removed the note receivable with a credit and Bendix will remove the note payable with a debit. BDCC also credited the interest revenue for the accrual of $17.81 and Bendix will debit the interest payable for the same amount. 
Finally, BDCC recorded interest revenue of the remaining 34 days interest of $23.29 as a credit to interest revenue, where Bendix will record the same amount but as a debit to interest expense. Once again, notice that the dollar amounts in the entries for BDCC are identical to those for Bendix. The difference is that BDCC is recognizing a receivable from Bendix, while Bendix is recognizing a payable to BDCC.